Okay, welcome back. So here we are with another build video, or at least uh, kind of follow along as I build this. It won't be a step-by-step -step build video, but this is the uh, Ender Action Hobbies 1950s gas station. It's going to go over there in Lake City. It's kit number HO-3006. Just got out the day, ready to fire it up and get building. So it's nicely packed. Comes in this little plastic sheathing with a fairly substantial set of instructions. What you get in the kit, you get the base. It's kind of cool. There's the base. Looks like it's all got slotted for the various walls and whatnot. Cool. About five sheets of various walls, roofs, and whatnot. Go together. That's nice. You got a pretty cool looking sheet of signage, floorage, <laughs> kinds of good stuff. You also get one sheet of acetate, or clear, of course, for the windows and doors. A little bag of some other goodies, looks like windows, doors, interior details, kind of stuff. A bag of various sundry items for the assembly LED strip lights I think for the interiors and for the island the island is also lit so that's pretty cool oh and then separately which came in in the box you can either get a Sinclair or I think golf I got Sinclair so this is the Sinclair signage which I believe will make the sign there okay so gonna go ahead and get started looks like a lot of fun nice kit I don't really think I have to do much fiddling with it because it comes with pretty much everything. All right, you don't get the vehicle, which I don't think is a 50s prototype vehicle anyway, <laughs> at least for me. And you don't get the figures they show inside. You don't get the vehicle. They have a vehicle inside there. But you get a lot of details, a lot of interior details. So this is going to be a pretty fun kit. Pretty fun little build here. So let's get uh, let's rip and, let's get ripping and tearing here. And I'll show you one thing I did. Uh, next up, real quick, and, and waiting for the kit, and how I kind of prepped some th some stuff, and how I'm going to uh, hopefully uh, get this installed over in a layout. So I'm going to show a real quick segment on that. Okay, so when I was waiting for the kit to come in, I did a little bit of pre-work on the layout where it's going to be installed. And since I had some sidewalks with curbage and whatnot, what I, what I did is I took a, a one millimeter piece of that craft foam. As you can see, it's been painted at the start. And it's also cut out for the sidewalks where they're going to go. This is the corner right here. Sidewalks are going to fit there. This mat this matches to the road so you can drive in. Sidewalk, 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 and then the, the entrance is in and out. So the road's here and here. All right. So I paint, took this out, painted it, both sides, and then I marked off where I think this concrete pad's going to be, because I like the way that looks. I, I, think I think it's cool. So I marked that off. Again, not really knowing the exact dimensions. Like he gives you the dimensions, but still, he gives you the overall, you know, how far are these in from the ends. And I, Anyway, I, I just kind of estimated it. And I did scribe this out real lightly with the back of a X-Acto blade, masked it, and then painted this my concrete color, which I use Vallejo chalk white. And then I'll weather it up. And this still needs to be weathered. This is just um, a Panzer, no, I'm sorry, yeah, Panzer gray sprayed, stippled with some, uh, I just think, Rostoleum uh, spray bomb can of... Um, a satin white, I believe, to give the stippled look. That needs to be weathered a little bit to kind of tone things down, but we'll, we'll get to that. And then the thought was this will go over and get glued in on the layout with the sidewalks and be ready for the building. So I did go ahead and I cut out the base. And the way it's going to sit, if I did it right, <laughs> if it's going to sit all the way to the back of the asphalt so to say so to speak and then that lines up like that okay all right that's pretty nice you have the bays the concrete again the in and out and then this is the island for the gas pumps 
which will sit somewhere in here. Not exactly sure where. You need you know, room for the vehicles and whatnot. This probably should be a little bit larger, but you have to work with the space you have. So maybe something something like, along those lines. All right, good. So that's I, I want to verify that this is going to look okay with this, and it seems to be lined up pretty cool. Um, and then this this whole thing will be weathered while I'm building the kit now. Now that I know everything's going to line up pretty good, I can take this over and get it installed in a layout. Get it glued down very carefully. I'll have to really get some glue along the edges so everything gets down nice, nice and flat. And then get the sidewalks in, and then it's pretty much ready. Well, I'll probably weather this here. It's a lot easier to do it like this here on the bench. As opposed to on a layout, well, you can still do it on the layout. Not, not a big deal, but probably do that. So okay, so that was a little, just a little brief introduction on how I'm getting the the actual pad, concrete, parking lot, la 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 la, all ready for it to go over on the layout. So all right, so now let's dig into the kit and start having some fun. Okay, moving on here. Just a couple notes, uh, things I'm learning. As I go here, um, these walls are all multi-part, which is no, no problem. I had a little bit of a hard time figuring out what goes where, but eventually I got there. Again, I'm not the uh, highest octane gasoline in the tank, but uh, I, I figured it out. So these are pretty much ready to go. Uh, a note you do on the center panel, you do want to paint silver. I used aluminum around the frames here. They do, they do point it out, but it's really hard to see in, in the pictures. So on the middle one, you want to do that. And another neat thing, the way this is made up, the way they, they lay in a sheet, and I primed them with the Vallejo uh, white spray paint, white primer. It's kind of cool, because the outer wall obviously goes on the middle wall. And then when you assemble, if I don't break anything, to put the inner wall on, the way it's set up, and it's kind of cool, the side you paint it in a sheet, you know, like the front side of it is actually the inside of the building. So that was kind of clever. So you don't have to worry about painting the inside wall. It's already done. So that, that kind of cool. So kudos to the kit designer for figuring that out. Makes it a little bit easier. So that's pretty much ready to go. Oops, center, outer, trim, two doors. I had to figure that out. They're, they're green. These are silver or aluminum. I originally painted them green by mistake. Not looking close enough at the instructions, so they're ready to go. The front door is ready to go. I did also just do a quick spin over here. So the floor is ready to go. I have that set up with the floor glued down for the office area. And then all the other parts are painted. One thing I noted, I like I said, I sprayed the majority of the, well, the whole sheet to start off. All four sheets, actually. Five. <laughs> with the Vallejo Hobby Spray, Hobby Paint Spray, the white, the white primer. Well, I'm using, and I don't know if this, is, if this is perfect, but I'm using Tamiya Deep Green XF26 for the trim. You know, I don't know what's an exact match for Sinclair Green. I'm not going to agonize over it, but the point being, that, that was not the point. The point being, painting over this, I don't know what's a combination of the material and the paint. That to me is stuff didn't want to go on very well. It um, took like three coats in some areas to get it on. I mean, it, it went all fine eventually. Just, just a note. I don't know why. Um, now, where I painted it just on the base material, the sides of the gas pumps, some of the frames, and some of the that went on great. It went fine on the on the raw material, so to speak. Here's another. This is for the some of the the cases. And the back wall up there, I used a different Vallejo paint. What did I use? Dark yellow. Again, I don't know if it's the right color, but I used Vallejo in 70.978 dark yellow. For the interior back wall and for the cases and whatnot. So, Okay, so just FYI, um, I just don't know why. I don't know if it's a combination of the material with the spray and the, the Tamiya paint. And Anyway, it worked fine. It was just, I was like, what the heck? I thought having that nice flat base coat this stuff with you know top coat like butter on a crescent roll of thanksgiving but no took a little work all right let's get the first wall 
assembled and see how it goes. All right, wall assembly is proceeding pretty much per the instructions, gluing the three panels together. But I just want to make a note on this particular wall, which is the right hand wall assembly, the inner panel has got the it's the sheet with the three I don't know how easy it is the three horizontal mundlins or you know whatever they are <laughs> window frames. And when it was sitting in a sheet, the way it sits in. I painted it green from this side and that's good because this is the inside so it's got an inside and an outside because the that's the inside wall so you do want those painted green I didn't paint the other side you do want to paint both sides of that now what I was able to do pretty simply was oops once I realized the error of my ways I just got some green paint very careful with a real small brush painted everything even around the edges even around the edges here because the inner wall sticks out a tiny, tiny bit. I need to give it like a little bit of a frame. So just, just as a note, this right-hand wall, both sides of the horizontal mullions, munions, what are they? I forget. Window frames. I don't know. There's a word for it. Whatever. I'm an idiot. Just make sure you paint both sides. All right. Let's keep moving on here. All right, I uh, have to admit I've been a bit remiss in doing a good job <laughs> videoing this, but I figured I'll do it. I didn't want to get too far along. I'm pretty much just following the kit instructions, to be honest. Uh, I mentioned, you know, what I did on the on this one wall for the inside windows. Uh, another thing I noticed, they don't specifically call out in the instructions. You want to paint this your same trim color, the dark green that, that I'm using. Um, and, and again, I assume the instructions probably assume that you as a builder have some experience and would catch that. They don't specifically call it out. No, no big deal. Uh, they do mention, and it's a good suggestion, you know, whatever signs you want to put on the walls before you build it, get them installed. That makes sense. It makes it a lot easier than when you've got it, you know, you're trying to reach inside. So pretty much all the walls are now ready. Again, here's the back wall. It's going to sit back along there. Here's the side wall. And all I did on the side wall, I did add doorknobs. I don't know how visible they are on those two doors. Because that's something to me, you can see that. And I, I really noticed that when I put them on. So I, I like doing that. And I have to remember, you see on those windows, I still have the protective cover on the back, so i got to remember to pull that off. A little bit of touch-up on the silver, aluminum paint for around the frames for the big window. On the front wall, oh yeah, this, this was fun. Um, <laughs> the kit has you cut out these little teeny letters for the lubrication and washing, and then use the holder that they came in as the guide to glue them onto the building. Yeah, well, that's a, for me, that's a freaking disaster. Anyway, I got them on, but you may notice if you're a sharp eyed viewer, let me just change the F stop a little bit here to make it visible. Try to hold the camera in point. So I'm going along and I'm, you know, getting the letters out, and I was like, man, I hope I don't lose one of these letters. Sure enough, I got to the letter N. I had it in these little, Freaking damn tweezers and twang! Damn it. Yep, gone. My, I lost the letter in. So, out of the same material, I tried to cut one out. So that's why that end looks a little bit wonky. <laughs> that's my self made end. Not my finest work. But, oh man, I was like, you know, because I was this far along, I wasn't about to like try to rip it off. I, this one, this was on already. That's, I did this one first. <clears throat> So I was toward the end, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Anyway, I also added, you can see there, out of a micro-scale decal sheet, the uh, Pennsylvania and, uh, I don't know if it's Opaline, Opaline. Anyway, they're, let me just show you that, they're Sinclair decals. Micro-scale decals makes a really nice sheet. Let me just go back here and, I actually, I have an O-scale sheet and then an, and an HO-scale sheet. Yeah, here's the HO-scale sheet. 87 dash dash 969 Sinclair 
I'm going to actually use, you can see there's different Sinclair, uh, you probably can't see because the f-stop's going wonky, but that's uh, a little bit better, a little bit darker. And the kit comes with similar signs to this. I think those are, you know, late 50s into the 60s. I think this is the version that's more 40s and 50s. So I'm going to use this out of this decal sheet for my sign for out, out in the parking lot, or, in the, you know, the lot. So, and then I use these are signs I've seen. These are the uh, Pennsylvania and Opaline oil signs that I cut out and used. Um, nice set. Very nice set. That's a cool billboard. I had a place in the layout for a billboard. That's a nice one. Anyway, so... I had that set, so I was like, hey, that's cool. That'll be helpful. Um, I did do, again, per the instructions, that's just the, uh, the internal counter. That was fun to build. It's tedious, but it's okay. There's actually little items inside the glass case there, and there's some magazines on the top, <laughs> just for fun. So that'll be glued in after the things go together. This is just the wall just kind of sitting there. I did do all the benches, added some details to them. You can see this back one there, I added some just various stuff, some tools and wrench. Oh, you're not going to focus, are you? All right, you're painting the rear end. A um, <laughs> little backboard there with some, you know, wrenches and stuff and just various items. And what I also did, <laughs> out of the old gas station, I actually went in and ripped the details out. I was thinking, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sell this thing. I'm like, you know what? Shut up, Rob. You're not going to sell it. First of all, no one's going to buy it and pay you for it, what you put into it. So just save the details. So I have the lift that I have a, actually have a hole for, for the right side here. So I'll put the lift in. And I have a various other items. Um, I also made the shelves. These are the shelves that come with the kit. Tedious, but they, they're, they're fine. Just take your time. And I'm not going to have room for all these things that came out of the other kit. This is These are from the, I think it's the JL, JL Innovative gas station interior. So, they're nice. Um, so, I have those. And this is one of the shells. So, again, not all this is going to fit, but got plenty. Oh, there's the back wall of the office with the shells and some signs on it. That's going to go right in here. And you'll, you'll see that pretty easily through the front window, since it's so large. Alright, so, that's where I am. I'm to the point now, and it probably might be hard to tell, but, like I said, the walls are ready to go. And even on this wall, I put some, you know, some of the details. I didn't put doorknobs on these, because I don't think you're going to notice it. So, all these little benches will be installed. Again, once I get the walls up, so I can kind of fiddle with it. It's been weathered with some ammo of MIG pigments. I did use, um, what is it, I think it's one of the uh, ammo or AK Interactive fresh engine oil. Just some drops of oil on the floor, you know, as the folks are working. So, we're to the point now where it's time to put the walls on. You start with these, I think you start with this wall and the, the front and they call it the left. They go on first. Then the window, the big window goes in. Then the other walls go up. The interior wall, the office wall, the bathroom wall. <clears throat> and just keep, you know, putting the walls on. And then probably before I put these walls, this, the back and the right, I'll put this in. And put that in. I'm not sure I'm going to paint it. I might just leave it red. Well, who cares? And then it'll just be my, oops, sorry about that. It'll be a matter of, uh, Get the walls on and get the interior in. So moving along, um, really nothing of note. I just pretty much been following the instructions. Don't have any. The, the, the few things I mentioned before are the only things I really caught, and are not major. So, all right, let's uh, stop talking and get back to work. Oh boy, it's coming together now. All right, so the four main walls are on, and they went in fine. The one thing I did do, because I was a little heavy-handed painting the base, I used uh, just a Vallejo uh, model color, actually it's in the train color line, chalk white, which is my preferred concrete color. Well, okay, a little bit got in some of the slots that the wall, the tabs from the wall met into. So, 
real quickly, I just went around all the tabs, sanded them just a little bit inside, outside. I had to clean out some of the tab, the slots in the base where I was a little heavy handed with, with the paint. But other than that, everything fit up nice. I had to trim a couple of the trim pieces in the corners. But overall, it, did, it fit together well. Um, I did put some extra glue in certain, like in this back corner where you're never going to see it. That's going to be closed off by other walls. Uh, this upper front corner, right up in here, just a, just a little dab. For this big piece of glass, which I was worried about, because I don't do glass very well, and I even still got some darn <laughs> excess glue, I did have to trim it a little tiny bit, because I wanted it to fit very well. You know, I didn't want to be fiddling with it, you know, sticking my fingers in there, trying to get my freaking fingerprints all over it. Although, I actually wore white gloves putting this in. <laughs> um, I did add a sign here. A tire sign and the U.S. tire sign. They're actually on the inside. I wanted to try it because that's probably the way they would be. So I had some scrap of the acetate and some smaller signs. And I actually tried it here first to make sure it would work. But just a little tiny, don't, this was too much. I put a, I really slathered on the canopy glue on that one. Well, you can see it. But on this one, just a little, uh, two dots, just two little dots. It dries clear, and it, you can't even tell the glue's there. So I said, okay, so that seems to work okay. So I did that for a U.S. tire sign here and a diamond tire sign here. And I don't know if those are the appropriate signs for the era, for the area of the country. Would Sinclair, you know, sell those brands? I don't know. But that's what's on the windows. So just, again, I'd have to trim that a little bit. Basically all four sides. Uh, then you take it out, you bend it to a 90, and it fits right, it fits in, it fits nice right inside that little area there. Just run a little bead of canopy glue. I put some dots here, and that's where I put a little bit too much and didn't catch it. But anyway, and it goes in nice. And then the shelf supports go in the shelf, and see so I got some doodads there. I did not do quite nearly as nice a job as he did, the, the kit manufacturer. I don't know the gentleman's name. Um, he, he really painted these up nice. I just painted them and slapped them in. <laughs> so, whatever. So, that is it. Um, oh, I did add, well, you can tell I added the the lift before I put the back wall on, just to have it in, so I'm not trying to reach in there now and do a whole lot of monkeying around. I may go ahead and add the, some of the interior benches, you know, the wall stuff. Now, the next step is to add the this inner wall the other oh, bathroom wall and then I think the front showroom wall and then you gotta slot things for lights and everything so but overall it's going together nicely um, pretty happy with it so far so there we are uh, some more to come as I get more of the, the interior walls done Woo making progress so here we go so all the walls exterior and interior are in and uh, everything's setting up here a little bit. I also decided to go ahead and get the details on the inside, as you can see there. On the shop side, is it right? I don't know. But you know what? I just had some fun and put the things in there, and away we go. Now here on this side wall, you may notice a large gray thingamabobber. <laughs> what I did there was simply, there's a notch here for the wires for the lights. The LEDs to run into this back room. Well, I figured, it, and this has to be low. It, it can't be a whole lot higher because of the roof on this side. Otherwise, you poke it out and you got wires coming out in the roof. So, in order to kind of hide that when you're looking in, and I'm not even sure how visible it would be, I just put that thing on the wall. Okay, so it's just kind of a, I don't know, ventilation type thing of a bobber. It looked cool and venti, so I just slapped it in there. The intent being to try to I'll bring the wires, as, you know, as straight as I can, 90-90. So hopefully they're kind of hidden behind that where they poke through the wall. I did notch this out here. This is the back of the showroom or the little office here for the wires to come back. And this will be all, all connect everything and drop down there. So the next step is, oh, I had a little eh, oversight. This is the little canopy. That goes, I can't do this and hold the camera and chew gum and talk and right there. 
and they recommend you put or they suggest you put some they say 300 I didn't have 300 320 whatever you just to get a little bit of texture well it makes sense I like it I kind of like the way it looks so I was like darn it because I had the thing all together and the middle one's a little bit you probably can't even see it but it sticks out a little bit so I couldn't use that as a template I was like darn it now what do I do well you can see I didn't get it quite perfect but what I did do was like wait a minute you do have a template because what you have here is the leftover sprue or the, you know, the sheet where everything came out of and this right here is the top piece so I tried to lay this on top of some of the sandpaper and cut it with a real sharp knife and it worked okay probably would have been easier to have the actual piece to lay on there I probably could have got a little bit, a little bit more accurate but I may come in and, and then paint this once it dries up with some of the black gray to kind of dull it a little bit and then maybe I can dress up the edges just a touch I don't think it's that terrible and you know even if I left it alone it probably wouldn't be a big deal but I probably do want to tone that down a little bit point over here Rob there you go sorry so I may work on that and just try to dress up a wee little bit but otherwise not too bad and now and now, sports fans, it's uh, time to add in the bottom trim that goes around, the green trim. Now, the kit supplies some styrene strip, really, really tiny. Well, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's fine, but if I'm going to glue something to this, you know, paperish board type material, I'd rather it be wood. So what I did was I took some, I think, 1x4 um, from Northeastern Scale Lumba, painted it green, and I'm going to use it. It's, it's, it's slightly bigger, but that, I don't think it's going to be really noticeable. And to me, it's just easier to handle. Um, and, I th and I think it would look better, uh, you know, at least in terms of the way I'm going to be able to handle it. I suppose, I think if, if, I don't know, if the canopy glue would work all that well, plastic to this stuff, the styrene to this, maybe it would. I know it'll work great with the with the wood to this, so that's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. And another faux pas, not really a faux pas, but one thing I overlooked, you can see the edge here. That's the edge of the front sheet. That's just the way the building goes together. And the edge back here, well... What you're supposed to do now is touch that up with the same color as the wall. Well, <laughs> I sprayed the wall, the Vallejo White, they call it a primer, but the Vallejo White Hobby Spray. I don't know if I have anything that matches it perfectly. So what I may try, and some of the Vallejo, uh, like, well, not the Vallejo, but white acrylic paint to me always is an issue. I never seem to be able to get a good, consistent coat. It just doesn't paint nice. I don't know why. Maybe it's me. What I might try, I think I might have some home roll enamel. And it's, you know, the, the thing about home roll is it sits for a while, it gets all that nice gooey, pigmenty stuff. Maybe what I'll try is to come in there and, and get a little bit of that, just to touch that up. Because you don't want it to be too obvious that it's not the same. Failing that, what I may do, may, I do have some real small <laughs> uh, angle. Again, wood angle from northeastern scale lumber. And you probably can't even see that. It's a little tiny angle. Now, if I painted it green, which I did, you know, could I come in here and use that? I'm not going to be able to do this. And you can see I'm already tilting the camera. And, you know, use that as the corner. Now, the prototype buildings don't have that. But I don't think it looks that terrible kind of dresses up the corners a little bit kind of hides them you know what i mean maybe i will do that i don't know and again that's the same material you know it's wood so it, it would really get on there nice so let's that stay there oh look at that now again that's not prototypical it's not the way the original buildings are but whatever you know you're talking the four corners basically so i don't know we'll see all right more to come here as we uh continue cooking away here with gas. Woo! 
Oh boy, getting close now. <clears throat> all right, so what I did, I got all the base trim on. Yeah, it went okay. It's just hard, you know, cutting the little pieces out. And as you notice, I did decide to put the the green pieces on the corner. And I, I, you know, I I really like it. it Maybe hard to see because I don't have good light here, but I think it really kind of sets the building off. It looks pretty darn nice. Um, the back, it's only the four corners. I added the sumps for the instructions. I I did add a doorknob on the far door here because it's. I did do a test placement on the layout, and it's visible. So okay, so I just drilled the 78 hole and popped it in there. These are the sumps. I didn't do it per the instructions. They say to use the evergreen uh, rod they provide, which I did, and then cut some wood down. I'm like, what? What's with this guy using dissimilar materials? I just cut a piece of. I have some 060 square uh, evergreen, you know, uh, not tube, but a square piece. Cut it off longer, glued it on, let it set, cut it down to size, took it out, painted it, rusted it up. There you go. So that's that. Now on the back side, I did add the two downspouts that he says to add. They just kind of come up and end here, I guess. Again, this is going to be the back side. It's not going to be very, very visible, so I'm not overly worried about it, but I figured I'd put them in. Oh, I did add the men and women sign. Yeah, that was a treat. Uh, you have to cut them out, fold them, <laughs> not lose it. I put a little dab of glue in between the folds to hold the, the two sides together. Then put a little tiny bit of glue on the uh, end. Held it in there, and hopefully it'll stay. But it does say men and women. The uh, canopy's on. Inside, I added a few more. Details the guy there reaching this dude's here buying spark plugs and he's reaching into the candy jar. I put the door in that's up. I don't really know it's gonna be noticeable, but I did it. Another guy there cleaning the floor, so that's pretty much ready to go. Oh, I did add, yeah, I even added a little angle piece right here in that corner, which was not easy, but eh, okay. All right, so now this is really ready for the roof. The roof is on fire. So what I've done, let's just look at the instructions real quick here. So we're cooking along. Oh, I know, I like this. This is, <laughs> you know, I'm reading along. Put this in. Yep, do the notch of the lights, right? Can And then number 20, there, there's two pictures. But there's no, there's no text at all. Just two pictures. Now I think what he's saying is get your own stuff, cut these out, fold them, and make this little sign for the sidewalk. I guess, but I'm not sure I'm going to go to that level, but there's absolutely nothing about that in the instructions, so that's okay. Interesting. And there's the sumps. Oh, I did try this with this. There's some paper back here to to make straps. I, mean, I will or won't, I don't know. Here are the downspouts. Here's where he puts the straps on, so I may play with that. The door, yeah, I made all this stuff already. Soda machines in progress. Where is it? dark hard to see but it's up there so that's that, that'll be on later once we're on the layout oh yeah the men and women signs got those done <laughs> amazingly now it's the the roof time so these are his vents for the roof and he made it removable and did all kinds of extra stuff for lighting which I'm not doing uh, and then after the roof goes on it's time for the gas pumps which will be a bit of work so that's pretty much where I am so I am pretty much ready but the uh, Put the roofs on. Now, what I did, what I like to normally do when I light buildings, is like you know, run a piece of strip wood or something like that. Have the lights in, bring it back, do all the wiring before the roof goes on. Well, I don't know the, the way this is. It's not going to work that way. I don't think because it might be too visible to see if I did that. Because I wanted to mount the light right to the roof. Okay, not the end of the world. So what I did, here's the, pardon me while I swing the damn camera, here's the roof panel, the inside, I did add some additional bracing, LED strip, it's cut and bent to, to feed through here, so what I'll do is I'll make this 90 and the 90, and then on the other side of the roof I did add 
sandpaper. So basically, I'm going to put this side in first. And I'm going to run this wire through. Or I'm going to run the wire through into here. So I'll have to feed it down through. Through the building. And then bring the other roof. Where are you? Here you are. Okay, it's got it light. It, <laughs> it got it light. It's got its light in there. I did add some Tamiya clear orange to kind of yellow these up a little bit. And very, very slightly on these. I figured the shop might have a different type of light, something like that. So, And then this. So then once this is on, wires are in. I'll have to very carefully, again, take these wires, feed them, you know, feed them through. And then get the roof in and glued on. And then do all the connections outside the building, basically. Um, it just, it's just kind of too small and cramped to have the lights mounted, wire them up like I like to do. You know, make the joints and everything, and just bring one set of wires down. But that's okay, I put plenty of extra. You know, this is 24 gauge wire, solid wire. I'll bring it through and just make the connection on the outside. Not, not a big deal. So that's next. So it's uh, time to get the roofs on. I'd say they are sandpapered and painted uh, pans are gray. And when they're on and secured and glued down, I'll go ahead and weather them up a little bit. Um, I do have a couple other details. Oh, the vents got to go. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Where'd that camera come from? The vents have to go on. I have a roof hatch I may add. To say there's some way to get to the roof. Again, through this little part here. Because I don't want to put it back here because there's no, obviously no way. But if you go to this little room here, that could be a way to get up to the roof. Where did I put my little roof thing? Anyway, it's drying up somewhere. I don't know where I put it. Okay, so let's uh, get the roofs on, hopefully, get the wires down through, roof secured, and then it's time to build the gas pumps. Oh boy, here we go. Alright, so I got the roof on, and I, I put a little bead of glue on the underside of the roof. Set it in there, had to wiggle it. I, th I hope I got those wires lined up right. I didn't look inside yet. Did test the lights, just turned them on to see that they work and how things may look inside. I don't know if I can get the camera up to see those wires. I might not be, I'm not going to move the, eh, I don't think I can, not yet. But that's the interior. That looks alright. Cletus and Bubba working hard. Alright, nice, nice. And again, I just give those, a, those lights a little, they were really bright white. Give them a little touch of that just to kind of yellow them up just slightly. And hopefully those weights hold. I, needed, I did need the weights because there's a little bit of um, bend in the roof. Real slight. But it's only got a real thin ledge <laughs> that it sits on. It's basically just like the inner inner panel of the wall. It's all that's sitting on. So I'm hoping that uh, it doesn't slip through. I don't think it will. But... Uh, that's it. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, what I forgot to do, what I should have done, turn these lights on, is I should have taken this over the layout, set it where I want it, and just mark the hole that I have where the wires are going to go through. It's a lot easier to do that. So, I still can do it. So, when this sets up for, you know, an hour or so, I'll take the building over before I glue this roof on, this half on, set it in, get a Sharpie, mark the hole so I know exactly where it's going to be. That way I can drill the hole, and when I bring the, this, the building, the, the wire should go right through. Nice and easy. Easy peasy. At least that's, the, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right, more to come as we progress. Okay, here we go. Pretty much have this rete for the layout. Got the uh, roofs installed. Yeah, they need a little bit more weathering, which I'll, I'll get to. But overall, things are looking relatively good. I did finish the... Eh, I'm probably not going to see it because I don't have great light. And I can't really move the building all that well now because of the darn lights. I added some straps to those sump vents. Supposed to do the same thing to those downspouts in the back. I'm probably not going to just because, well, you're going to see it. <laughs> so there's the side... Get my men and women sign. Didn't fall off yet, so that's encouraging. So let's take a look. Because I did uh, 
the lights ready to go here. Let me just so I can pop these on. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see if we can set the mood a little bit. That's not moody enough. Let's really get moody. Ooh, moody. Okay. Like I said, I did yellow up those lights in the office just a touch. I can't really focus too much. And I did paint the little dinosaurs on those oil cans. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. Okay. Let's see if we can get a view. If I go real slow here, I'm not sure it's going to be able to let us look inside here and stay focused, or I'm banging the camera off the weights because I. Yeah, you get the idea. Okay, so now. Now's the time on sprockets when we make the gasoline pumps and the little island. Alright, so let's uh, set this aside for the moment and work on the gas pumps. All right, one thing I forgot to mention last segment. I did add here in front of the two bays. You know, it was really kind of a pretty serious curb action going on there. So I figured, well, you drive your nice 1955 Studebaker in there. and I'm not sure how robust the transmissions or the suspensions were back in that day. So I took, I had some roughly one-eighth wood. I don't know, it's, I was hoping for soft wood, a little bit harder than I I wanted it. And then I just kind of cut it to come out to the edge here. And then I just sanded it. Now it took a while to get a little bit of a slope on it. So that way, it's just a little bit, you know, more gentle as I ease into the bays. So that was just something I added. I might recommend they include that in the kit because that's something that uh, you obviously could make up and have ready to go and just glue in there because I think it looks pretty good. Okay. With that, now we're on to the gas pumps. All right, so we're forging along here, and I'm making the pumps and the little pump station, and pretty much following along, making the gas pumps. That's not a big deal. You know, they're small and they're they're nitty, but you know what? They're going to look pretty nice, I think. So I got these two drying up, and I'll, I'll complete that. Now, where I noticed I am going to take a little bit of, of a tangent from the instructions, and one reason is because the a part's missing, and another reason is because I'm going to try to make, make it easier on myself. When you're done, they say there's an 094, I'm sorry, 090 diameter uh, aluminum tubing that you put in the base. Okay, well, there is no 090 aluminum tubing in this kit. I couldn't find it anywhere so what I did you know, not a big deal I suppose I could whine and cry and complain but no I went into my box of uh, K&S engineering little brass scraps basically and what I found was I found a piece that's probably about the right diameter um, again, I'm trying to do this with one hand and <laughs> hold the camera so I found a piece thusly that I'm going to use now, that'll work well it's this <laughs> he says all right so I found this little scrap piece that's going to work just fine that'll go here in the pump base and then go through and that's a nice that's the, I like that that's a nice way to mount it that I'll, again I don't want to break anything here I'm doing this one-handed but you know that'll go through and that gives you a nice little bit to go on the layout to mount it. Now, then they call for, as you go through and do the lights, and I cut the lights, and yada, yada, yada. All right, so he calls to wire it with 030, with 36 gauge wire. I don't have 36 gauge wire. Um, what I do have is some 30 gauge, and I tried it. I think it's going to be fine, and plus it's going to be a little bit easier to handle, to be, in all honesty. All right, so that goes through. I think I'll be able to fit it through just fine. It looks like it's going to fit. And then for their support column, he says, and he does supply, and this was in there, it's a piece of 063 diameter aluminum tubing. Well, the 063 diameter, that must be the OD, that they provide in the kit won't allow 
the 30 gauge to go through. So, okay. So I went to my stash of engineering stainless steel tubing, and I happen to have 065 OD tubing. All right, so that's off by, what, 2,000? So, and it's going to work. Now, the difference is, and this is good, which I think is a bit lighter here, the ID of the engineer, I know you probably can't see it, of the engineering tube is larger, so the wall thickness is less. So in a nutshell, 2,000, you know, higher on the OD, a bigger ID, less wall thickness, it fits right into the tube, the uh, scrap piece of tube, because I'm pointing the camera at my freaking legs, and I, again, I can't do this with one hand, trust me, it does fit, oh, there we go, okay, so that'll fit through there, <laughs> trust me, it does, fit. okay, all right, so that'll fit in there like that, and, and the O30 wire fits down the tube, so it's going to be a lot easier for me, so that's what I'm going to do. So the O90 piece they called for was missing, but I found a scrap piece. I'm not going to use the piece of O63 that they provided, because the ID is much smaller. The wall's a lot thicker. I can see it. Probably can't even tell in the video, but I can see it. So using an engineering of O65 OD, with less wall and a bit and a larger ID, I can fit the wire in. So that's what, that's what I'm, what I'm going to do. That's the only difference I'm going to do. Now it's just a matter of making it all the different layers. You got to be careful. There's many many layers to this, as you can see. Um, they say you should paint both sides. You don't really have to paint both sides, um, but since the greens kind of stick out a little bit, you do want to make sure the edges are painted and in you know a sixteenth or so. Not just paint kind of painted both sides. Which is not a problem, but you, you don't really have to paint fully both sides. You can see that's off a little bit, but it's not going to matter. Okay, so now it's a matter of assembling the layers, getting the light strip in, soldering on the O30 leads, and making them long enough to go down through the tube, the base, to wherever I want to go. Although I'm probably going to try to bring this through um, the layout and then change to a larger diameter wire. Um, I'm not sure yet, but this is just a pain in the rear to, to deal with. I can't imagine what O36 would be like, or 36 gauge wire. So, all right, only difference there, just slight difference because of the lack of tube and to make things a little bit easier. But luckily, I had the material I need, so I'll now forge ahead after babbling through this and get the uh, the pump area built. Oh, okay, there it is. Got it soldered. Man, are tiny. <laughs> Held down with some of the blue tape. Put a much smaller tip in my soldering iron. And got it in there. So I have about two feet length. Two feet length? Two feet of length. On this number 30. And that should be fine to go where I want to go and do whatever. So, alright. So that uh, does that. Let's uh, continue building this bad boy. Ooh, that was interesting. Well, okay. Uh, I got it. Uh, not sure it's perfect. It's not <laughs> RPM photography. Ooh and all your friends perfect. But you know what? For the layout, it's going to be just fine. So that's done. The lights are on. It's rather hard to see, in all honesty. Here on the bench. Um, let's see if I turn that light off. Yeah, I can't really get the uh, exposure to show it. That it's anyway. Uh, the lights are on. They do work. So I think when it's on the layout, it'll look pretty good. Like I said, it was a bit of a challenge. Those really small parts, getting the hoses on there. <laughs> I'm not sure they're long enough. Ah, uh, the handles might be too big. Anyway, it's it's together. Um, didn't do a great job on the pumps. As I kind of was suspecting, and again, it's going to be hard to see. I don't even know if it will show up here, but I could have spent hours and probably should have sanding that to make it a lot smoother. 
when you have you know separate pieces like that that are that that board material that's not real smooth I don't care how carefully you put it together anyway that is it like I said for at the layout level it's fine for super fine photography eh, not so much but then again that wasn't really my my goal with this so so that's done ready to go at least I got it ready to go on the layout I might need to do a little bit of touch up not a lot um, I mean the pumps got a little bit uh, distressed but you know they're outdoor pumps and they're white and you know white shows dirt pretty easily any of us that ever ever had a white car know that so you know what it's fine I'm just gonna call it soup take it over to the layout and, and install it now the next thing is the sign and a couple other little gingerbread things I gotta work on but we're getting real close really really close to having this puppy done so all right at least I was able to pull that off for uh, for now and get and get it ready on the layout okay I'm gonna call this thing done because <laughs> I'm getting tired of fiddling with it all right so the last things I had to do I did a test fit in the layout everything was fine brought it back over here because I had to do this Sinclair sign here on the front which I failed at um, hey Dino Bob went on fine or actually I don't know but the little dinosaur he's there that was that was easy that was a cut out and glue on on the roof I weathered it a wee bit I did add two small vents now the kit has another vent like that to me that looks more like a bathroom vent I figured over here on where the you know where the bays are did have a little a little bit larger fan but not or vent nothing huge and I, I have some you know larger ones that I kept at a Walther's kits and I think from Rick's products and I like them but they're ginormous it looked way too overpowering so I figured, well you know these little guys aren't bad they're small little ceiling vents that uh, they are 3d printed ones I have in my box of rocks so all right so now for this sign what I did what I was supposed to do <laughs> and what I did not do although hey, I tried I did try all right the instructions say to take the letters they give them to you inside a sheet of that real thin material paint them which I did probably too much paint that makes it a pain to cut out and then basically put a piece of tape on it or what does you call it low tack scotch tape low tack yeah good luck trying to find low tack anything and then basically get the letters out in the tape makes sense put a little bit of glue across the bottom bring it over set it on the glue dries and you pull the tape off I was like ah, I don't see this working and it didn't there was no way I had low tack enough tape and these letters were not gonna stay on the roof once I started to pull the tape off it wasn't gonna happen I, I'm, I'm not skilled enough to pull off the way he, I was he did it because he's got him on the kit that way all right so I'm fumbling and swearing and having a good old time I say okay what can I do here well what I did I look over at my little grab area of junk and other paraphernalia so, yeah, there's a small little piece of wood looks kind of like a 4x4 four four or something like that I wonder if I could carefully individually glue the letters on with a little dab of super glue and then bring that whole piece and mount it to the roof well that's what I did I'm not saying it looks the greatest I did paint it green you know, kind of match the motif of the building but that's the only way I could get those individual single standing letters and I probably don't have it quite straight because I just did it by eye and they're small I mean it might look large here on the video but they are small little letters you know what good enough I did paint it green like I said it's green it kind of matches you, you get back far enough away you can't really tell I guess that this building is obviously not gonna be made for up close photography but whatever so and I guess we go back we go back to the, where we are in the layout yeah it looks good enough to me all right so now I do have to finish the soft drink or pop machine depends what area of the country you are again that's another one of those darn things that's glued together with individual pieces and I don't think I get it smooth enough but it is going to sit back pretty far so maybe if I get it painted it won't look that bad but I can pop that in later so now 
This is going on the layout. I got tested the lights. The lights all work. I got the uh, PETA sign on there. PETA being P-I-T-A for those that know what that means. <laughs> A little bit of weathering on the roof. Good enough. Let's get it on the layout and move ahead. Okay, here she is. Test fit on the layout. And as I was on the way up to go to the restroom, I saw my friendly neighborhood mailman come by. And look what I got now. <laughs> I saw this on eBay. I said, you know what? Ah, what the heck? It's a, what, 4146 tow truck or something like that. Sinclair. I was like, oh, yeah. we got to have that for the station. <laughs> so i got to put that, uh, put the mirrors on it and whatnot and weather it up a little touch. And there we go. All right. So that's that. That's how it's looking. I did have a bad day. I came down <laughs> for lunch, and this 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 one side of the hose had fallen off. I was like, "Oh, you gotta be kidding me!" And yeah, so I had to pull it back out and re-glue it. So okay, no, no worries. So here it is, sitting here now. Gotta wire the lights up, and I may I may actually pull it back out because I just I kind of forgot. I, I need to do some of the scenery back behind here up to the edge of the asphalt yeah maybe easier to do that just you know take care of this before the building's there so i'm not reaching over and knowing my luck breaking something uh, i think this will be okay i'm just gonna be real careful um and then it's pretty much pretty much done maybe i'll do one more segment when i get it in and all lit up and all that kind of fun stuff but there you go Oh, I do have to do all... <laughs> I had another bad day with a sign. I'll, <laughs> I'll do a brief segment on that. What the heck. Let's make this video even longer. But there you go. That's how it's roughly going to look. Sitting on the layout. Corner gas here in Lake City. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about this sign. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, just for fun, because like I said, I, we show the good, the bad, and the ugly. On this channel, mostly the bad and the ugly. But I, So I decided to use, you know, the circular Sinclair sign, which I believe is more 40s into the mid-50s, before they changed to the other version of the sign, I think. Anyway, I like this version. That's what I'm going to use. This is in the microscale decal set, like I said, for the Sinclair gas stations, and I... Cut them both out, and <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm such an idiot. It's obviously I'm not going to be a custom decaler. Yeah, decaling is one of those things I'm not going to be that good at. But I, you know, I, I cut out a little. I think it's O10 maybe or no, nah, maybe O20. A little styrene disc. That, that's the the practice one I had. That's the other one. That's a whole other story. But I, I got it done. It's good enough for government work. And then I said, okay, they say, go ahead, and you, what you all to do is micro-gloss it if it's bare plastic. So I did. Let it sit. Then I came down, and I cut the decal out, both of them, real carefully. You know, got it set in there, put the micro-set on there. It floated off the decal in the water, no problem. Got it set on there. Did some more micro-set, moved it around, got it exactly where I wanted it. And they say, when you got it in position, come in with a soft tissue. Well, I did that. And the darn thing moved. And then what I did, and here's where people are going to cringe that did this. I went to move it with my finger. <laughs> okay? Note to self. Don't do that. <laughs> because then the decal ripped. And I got really mad. And I ripped it all off and said, son of a you-know-what. And uh, some other choice uh, Navy chief sailor language came out of my mouth. That I won't repeat here on this uh, at least PG rated uh, channel. Uh, okay, okay, fine. Calm down. Turn it over. Try the other side. And I did it. And I think it's okay. It's there. I, I took my time. I was very, very, I was more careful, I guess, in terms of when I got it placed on there. I, I think it'll be fine. Again, I, I, I'm not real experienced doing decals yet, so... And then, of course, I got angry, so right away, I went upstairs, 
Do, 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 do. Sit down, go on eBay, uh, micro scale 87 969. There it is. Sinclair decal, $7. Ships today, you'll get it. And boom, bought. So, <laughs> I am not going to let a decal beat me. I have another set coming because there's only two of those, and one is now in pieces all over the workbench. <laughs> and once it comes in, I'll do the other side. Uh, I do have what I'm going to use for. The sign itself. This is some. Uh, I think it's O six. I think it's sixteenth tube from KNS Engineering, because they do give you some in the kit. But I must have misunderstood them, or, or I don't know. I'm just dumb. I think I used it for the downspouts on the back of the building because there's nothing here that's long enough for the signs. Okay, no, no worry. So I made that up. A little base there that I'll paint concrete. Now, I do need to figure out, you know, how I'm going to mount or hang the sign off of it. I have some ideas. I'm not there yet, but I'll figure out something. And then I'd like to also put on the sign, because I have seen these come with the kit, that clean restrooms. I've definitely seen those on uh, vintage photographs of Sinclair Station, so I might take those off and put, you know, put them on each side of the signs. All right, so more to come on this. But this can be done later. This can be added once I get the other decal set and calm down and hopefully get the other other side decaled right. <laughs> it's just so funny when you sit there. It's like, as soon as I did that, I came with my, I was like, I'm just going to move this real carefully. Oh, all right, anyway, I'm sure all the uh, guys that decal out there are going, oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, don't worry, I did it myself. At least I hope you did. Okay, so more to come on this. We'll get her done. It's just, this can go in later. It's not, not a huge deal. But I'm getting there. So eventually I'll muddle through that and get the damn thing done. Darn thing, darn thing. I will get the darn thing done. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, I'm going to call this done. It's here on the layout. Got it wired up. Everything appears to be working as intended. Now, of course, there's some more details to do around the station, but that's not part of the build. I said I still have that soda machine to add, and probably a couple other details here and there. You can see I did put a hose on this side because it kind of looks like they were spraying water here on the parking lot. So <laughs> I figured oh, there should be a hose, but that's it. Okay, so. That is the build. Enjoyable build. You can pretty much follow the instructions. A couple little things here and there that I mentioned throughout the video, but overall, nice kit. Very nice kit. I like the look of it. I like the feel of it. All that kind of stuff. Tell you what, just for just for fun, let's go ahead and pop the lights off. I'll tell you what, I'll just kind of drone backwards here. Don't mind me shaking the camera. Now it got really dark, but you can see the light from the canopy, the lights inside. Don't know if it'll focus if I try to zoom in. May or may not. I can't really tell. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I, that looks good, man. I, I'm really happy with the way this all turned out. Cletus and Bubba. Working hard, late at night. Okay. Fits in nice here with the scene. We've got some other stuff going on here, but uh, that's for a different video. So let me just pop these back on. Okay, here you go. One Sinclair 1950s gas station by Interaction Hobbies. Very enjoyable. Okay, more to come. I got a couple other videos in the works. Oh, actually, I shouldn't say that. This might come up after the main video that covers the whole area. So, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, it was uh, interesting. I know it was long, but you know me. I just have to blab. So, <laughs> okay, here we go. Finishing off the scene here in Lake City.